So Corey here with the Mentor and Engineer, and this video marks the first of many for a new project called Tilly's Terror. Tilly's Terror is the next backyard coaster, but this one's gonna have a launch up to 25 miles an hour and three inversions. Gonna have a barrel roll with a, a scorpion tail and then come back to the barrel roll uh, backwards. So, uh, excited. I'm excited about this. We're also gonna put on a fully professional control system. We need your support. Please, uh, we're starting a Patreon channel. We need you to go over there, check it out, be a supporter. So as a supporter of this project, uh, there'll be several perks. Uh, you'll get an invitation to come out and ride it when it's ready. Uh, we will have uh, shout outs and videos. We're gonna make a plaque to show everybody who contributed. And you get just to brag to your friends and say like, hey, that switch right there, I bought that switch. So please take a second to go and check out the link below in the description and sign up today for our Patreon. Okay, so the purpose of this video is to talk about how we're gonna run our three horsepower motor that's gonna control the launch system. So our DC motor is gonna take between 30 and 35 amps at its peak to operate. Well, I don't have a power outlet that's gonna provide me with 35 amps without breaking a whole bunch of fuses or burning up wires in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge a large bank of capacitors off of a 120 volt source. So theoretically 90 is the, the number that I need to charge my capacitors to, but I wanna set it at 96 volts. So a capacitor is a tiny electronic device that stores charge electronic uh, electrons basically and they will have a capacitance value and a voltage value and we need to make sure that we don't exceed these otherwise we're going to do what electroboom does all the time and make these explode he made an alarm clock out of that so whatever anyway his channel is way bigger than mine so i shouldn't complain so when you look at capacitors you can generally find them with small capacitances and large voltages or large capacitances and small voltages well we need both. So we're going to have to add a bunch of these together. So when I look online, I can see that 2.7 volts is a common capacitor voltage for large capacitors. So I've selected this voltage and if we divide our 96 volts that we want to charge to by 2.7 volts, we need 36 capacitors uh, all strung together in series to make this capacitance. Well, I want to give myself a little bit of breathing room. Uh, so we're actually going to increase that number from 36 to 40. And that way I don't have to worry about my capacitors blowing. Now when you put a bunch of capacitors in series, we actually do ourselves a disservice. See the capacitance will drop every time uh, we add one in series. So if I have two 10 farad capacitors in series, I actually drop my capacitance by half to five farads. So you can imagine if I go from one farad to 40 farads, how much that's gonna drop it by. So using this equation here uh, is how you calculate that. So we can simplify this equation if all the capacitances are equal. In our case, they would be. So if we take the individual capacitance divided by the number of capacitors, and that will equal our total capacitance. So let's work this equation a little bit. If I need 10 farads total, and I have 40 capacitors, I will need each capacitor to have 400 farad rating to get what I need. Now, before I move on to actually charging those capacitors, I wanna talk about safety. Now I'm charging this thing up to 96 volts and that is not safe. So in America, we have OSHA and OSHA tells us that a 24 volt system is the maximum we can work on uh, without special protective gear. And I wanna abide by that. So what I'm gonna do is arrange these capacitors into banks of 10 and I'll charge them each up to 24 volts. What I'll then do is I'll have four of these, these, these blocks and I'll stack them up uh, in, in series to get 96 volts and then I'll restack them into parallel to get 24 volts. So when I'm in the box working on it, I'll be in 24 volt mode. And when I'm launching and actually operating this thing, it'll be in 96 volt mode. And that'll get me within the OSHA limits of what I need to be. So let's move on to charging these bad boys, right? Okay, so standard capacitor will follow this equation and I'll start at a voltage of zero and move on up to the maximum voltage. It'll go very quickly at the beginning and then taper off towards the end as time goes on. 
So the current will be changing the voltage very quickly. So you can expect the current to be behaving opposite of this. So it'll be very big at the beginning, very large current, and then it'll taper off as time goes on. Well, if I'm plugging this into a wall, that's gonna pose a problem. We need to limit that current coming out of the wall. I wanna limit my current to 10 amps, and then I have five amps left over to do other things. So at the very beginning, the resistance across the capacitor is almost nothing, and the resistance in our wire is gonna be almost nothing. So theoretically, I'm pulling like an infinite amount of current, and we can't abide by that. So we need to limit it using Ohm's law. So we'll put a resistor in series with the capacitor and we can use Ohm's law uh, to do that. So we got uh, voltage equals uh, current times resistance. So 120 volts, 10 amps, we need a resistor of 12 ohms. All right, so we also have another problem. Uh, that's a lot of power. Uh, let's look at that. So power equals voltage squared over resistance. So that is 120 volts squared over 12. That's 1200 watts of power that I'm just wasting. I'm just, man, I don't want to do that. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is our charging circuit is defined by the time constant of resistance times capacitance. So uh, 10 amps and 12 ohms, that's uh, 120 and it ends up being seconds. If we wanna charge that, we actually need to go five time constants. So five times 120 seconds, that's 600 seconds. That's 10 minutes to charge this bad boy. I don't wanna wait that long either. So let's see if we can find a, a happy medium. All right, well, first thing would be like, let's change the resistance. Let's, as we charge this thing up, uh, we can decrease the resistance. So that's gonna be a very hard thing to do because these resistors are taking a lot of power. So they're gonna to have to be very high wattage resistors. You know, I guess turn some on and off as we, we go through the charging process. Well, that requires a control system that'll monitor the current and then tell me which resistor needs to be turned off at which time. Not the direction I wanna go. So what do we do in this case? Well, I'm gonna take out that resistor completely because I don't like it and I'm gonna put in a transistor instead. Now this transistor is gonna operate on a PWM signal coming out of a microprocessor. The microprocessor is gonna turn that transistor on and off very fast. Imagine flicking the light switch on and off very quickly. All right, well first it's gonna start off with it being off, and then it's gonna switch it just a little blip, little blip, little blip. We're gonna do that 100 times a second, that little blip. And as we go through time, we're gonna start off with a very little blip and then increase that, how long that blip is on until it's on completely. So as you can imagine, that little blip will cause some current to run and then it'll shut off. All right, now that may be pulling one amp, it may be pulling five amps, it may be pulling 20 amps. Uh, we gotta figure that out. So what we wanna do is monitor that current and keep that current at the limit as much as we can until we reach the top part of the curve where it'll just naturally decline. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell our microprocessor to start off with that little blimp and see what that current is. And if it's lower than our set point, we're gonna increase that blip and it's gonna be wider and then wider and wider. And eventually it's gonna trigger uh, a current monitor and uh, tell it to stop increasing that blip. All right, it's gonna keep doing the blip, but it's not gonna increase how wide the blip is. Now I've been calling it a blip, but it's really pulse width modulation or PWM for short. What that means is it's gonna pulse up to a voltage and we're gonna determine how wide that is uh, as far as how long it's gonna be on. Imagine it's on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. We would call that a 50% duty cycle PWM. So it's on 50% of the time. If we were to put a capacitor on it, we would get half the voltage of whatever's going across that transistor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that current, we're gonna feed a switch into the microcontroller, and if that switch is on, it's gonna continue to ramp up that PWM until that switch turns off. Once the switch turns off, we're gonna hold that PWM signal, and it's gonna stay there, and naturally it's gonna decay over time, uh, but we'll still be putting in our 10 amps the whole time. Uh, as it continues, it's gonna drop and then it's gonna turn back on. We're gonna ramp up our PWM signal. Our current's gonna go up as well. And we're gonna keep repeating this process until we get up to 100% PWM. It's gonna be on all the time and we are gonna eventually reach full charge. 
So there are three reasons why this will be a better solution. The first is we are charging only to 96 volts with 120 volt supply. So we're not trying to get to that extra last little bit uh, so we can chop this off a little bit earlier. The second thing is we're getting that resistor out of the way and uh, we don't have any extra heat buildup. Uh, this will be much more efficient. And thirdly, our time constant is gonna drop dramatically because we don't have a resistance value. So our charge time is gonna be a lot less. So this is gonna be the better solution all the way around. So let's move now to our test bench where we're gonna demonstrate how this is all gonna work. So here we are at our setup for the charging of our capacitor, where we wanna limit that current so we don't have a whole bunch of current coming in. All right, first and most importantly, we got our capacitor bank. I'm discharging it right now, so we'll stop doing that. And we have six 2.7 volt 500 farad capacitors. So we added them in series, and when you add capacitors in series, it decreases the capacitance, which sucks. Uh, so we went from 500 farads down to, uh, we divided by six, which is I think at 83 farads. Okay, so we got our power supply. In our case, it's 12 volts here. We've got a microcontroller. This allows us to charge our capacitors at the fastest rate possible uh, while still limiting the current. All right, so over here we got a transistor board and all it's doing is it's actually running the current, so the PWM inputs to it, and then the current uh, gets magnified uh, through, or gets turned on and off through that and charges the capacitors. And then this is a cool little thing I found on Amazon. It's just a current monitoring system. Uh, I've got five turns of coil here, so it's going to be five times, so we're looking uh, between 25 and 30 amps that it thinks it's got, but we're really only running about five. I've got current here on the voltmeter and voltage here on the oscilloscope, so we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Alright, here we go. Here, clicking, clicked off. We're running about six amps, six and a quarter. It's just holding that steady. I smell something. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. I forgot to unhook the capacitor. All right, so. Go ahead and discharge this again. Oh, I melted some wire somewhere. Oh, I melted MOSFET. Oh, hold please. MOSFET, MOSFET, you are hot. All right. Ooh, melted the board. All right, never, ever, ever, ever have your capacity discharging while you do the thing, while you try to charge it. Not gonna work, a whole bunch of current. MOSFET, MOSFET, da 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 da, MOSFET does. Can it spin from a web? No, it can't, it's a MOSFET. All right, here we go, let's try this again. All right, you can see it jumping up there. Oh, we're running 12 amps. Ooh, wait, what's going on here? All right, here we go. Now we're going up. We're running about six and a, or five and a half amps. And you can see our voltage is up to about three, four volts there. Let's click back on. Oh, I'm burning wires. MOSFET probably needs a heat sink. I'm gonna turn in the current a little bit. All right. So we probably come to the stage here where it's just gonna be continually on, and the current is just gonna continually drop because we're in that bottom half of the curve. Want two amps, so yep, does what we want. Most of the time, we're going to be operating this, we're going to be in that upper range of uh, this. But when we do the initial charging, 
we're going to have to be careful and use a charging system uh, just like this. Hey, well, thank you for watching this. Please take a second to look below in the description and get a link to our Patreon account. Uh, where we're going to release a whole bunch of cool stuff on this uh, coaster. You're going to be the first ones to get it there. If you made it this far, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate you being here and listening to me nerd out on this stuff. And uh, we hope you keep coming back. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.